Hello, this is a video on the 1930s poets or the Auden group. I'm sure you've heard of them before. W.H. Auden, Stephen Spender, Cecil Day Lewis, Louis McNeese, Christopher Isherwood. Let's talk about them now. Hey, I found this photograph. This is our Ted Hughes. And this is T.S. Eliot, Stephen Spender, W.H. Auden, and Louis McNeese. You can see all the great poets of this time here. The 1930s and Modernism. Well, the 1930s was a tumultuous period. When you hear the 1930s, the first thing that comes to your mind is the Great Depression. This was the height of modernism. The mo modernist writers had begun to write in the 1920s. And the 1930s writers were also modernists. But they were critical of high modernism as well. Modernism continued to evolve in the 1930s and reached what is called the late modernist phase at this time. Late modernism in the arts is actually a movement that came much later in the 1960s and 70s, I think. But this is not the same. This is like a critical response to high modernism. That is what I mean here. The Auden group negotiated with modernism in their works. That is what I mean. And many writers had an uneasy relationship with high modernism at this time. The high modernists were very elite. They were writing in an esoteric manner or a very difficult manner. The Auden group writers were not completely modernist in that sense. And the writers who had an uneasy relationship with modernism at this time included Somerset Maugham, J.B. Priestley, Evelyn Waugh, Graham Greene. Well, I will deal with these writers in another audio. Today, we are going to talk about the 1930s poets. But these writers were contemporaries of the Auden group or the 30s poets. So the poets of the 30s. W. H. Auden, Stephen Spender, Louis McNeese, Cecil Day Lewis, Christopher Isherwood. Did you notice many of them were Irish? They were Oxford educated and so they were called the Oxford group as well. And they wrote in a classical style. The modernists all wrote in a classical style. And Auden wrote in his famous introduction to the annual literary magazine Oxford Poetry in 1927. All genuine poetry is in a sense the formation of private spheres out of public chaos. You know that that is the nature of modernism. Modernist poetry is a reaction to public chaos. The Auden group writers used a self-consciously modern industrial imagery. They did not write in a rustic manner. They did not write rustic imagery like uh, the Georgian poets did. Mostly they used industrial imagery. But some uh, Auden group writers also had traditional styles. Because they largely used industrial imagery, they were called the Pylon poets. Pylon is a part of electrical transmission. It is a gadget used in electrical trans transmission. And Stephen Spender had written a poem called The Pylons. Yeah, Pylon is a massive structure used in power transmission. And Spender wrote a poem called The Pylons. So, the Pylon poets they were called, indicating that they used industrial imagery. The Auden poets were bisexual. They were poets who practiced homosexuality as well as heterosexuality. 
and they had left wing attitudes they were partly communist they were not completely communist they were partly communist they had a twist with marxism so they were also called pink poets and the orden group poets were not conservative like the modernists they were not conservative they upheld liberal political ideals and as i told you they were called pink poets for their fascination for marxism hey the orden group poets actually went to spain and took part in the spanish civil war many of them participated some of them were inspired the spanish civil war was fought from 1936 to 39 fought between the republicans who were loyal to the established spanish republic so the republicans were on the one side on the other side were the nationalists a rebel group led by general francisco franco republicans versus nationalists tisho tisho this was the spanish civil war and the orden group took part in it on the side of the republicans roy campbell in the book talking bronco nicknamed the orden group max ponde macni spender orden de lewis max ponde orden de lewis spender macni's Max Ponde, all of them served as editors of Oxford Poetry, a prestigious anthology of poems published from Oxford. Hey, I mentioned Francisco Franco. The Spanish Civil War was fought from seventeenth July nineteen thirty-six to first April nineteen thirty-nine, just before the Second World War ended. between the republicans sorry started between the republicans who were loyal to the established spanish republic and the nationalists so the spanish civil war between the republics and the nationalists happened just before the second world war the nationalists was led were led by general francisco franco this man and now we come to w h arden W H Arden lived from 1907 to 1973. He was born in New York. Hey, it's not New York, it is York in England. And he lived at Oxford. Remember, he was an Oxford poet. He lived at Oxford and then he moved to Berlin in Germany. many of his poems are about germany and he, he even had a german wife and from york he emigrated to new york that was in 1939 and he converted to anglicanism in 1940 many americans were anglicans and odd and also converted to anglicanism in 1940 Arden was anti-romantic. I told you he wrote in a classical style, and Arden stressed the importance of clinical and objective attitudes. Arden's works contain frequent image of a lone wanderer in an empty landscape. Arden's works contain the frequent image of a lone wanderer in an empty landscape. Arden wrote in various stanza forms from ballads to haikus he employed a variety of metrical forms and stanza forms and he often wrote like a lone wanderer looking at an empty landscape and musing on it arden was inspired by karl marx and sigmund freud so socialism and psychology you can see in his poems and this is w h arden cigarette smoking is injurious to health arden's career can be divided into early poems middle poems and later poems the early poems sorry the early poems were modernist in tone modernist poetry early 
because he wrote in 1930s just after the modernist period began and here he employs a dramatic manner and he shows leftist attitudes then came the poems of the 1940s which have religious and ethical themes unlike the 30s poems religious and ethical themes and they are less dramatic hey the early poems were dramatic like my lecture and the later poems were less dramatic the middle poems of arden were religious and ethical and less dramatic whereas the early poems were dramatic and show leftist attitudes the poems of the 1940s are more sober less dramatic and what about the later poems the last poems they were less rhetorical more emotional early poems were dramatic middle poems were less dramatic and the later poems were emotional are you getting it so the early works often show a recurrent theme what was the recurrent theme the psychological effects of the preceding generations on an individual life how preceding generations are affecting you psychological effects he called this family ghost remember he was influenced by sigmund freud the orators an english study came in 1932 it is a long poem it's a long modernist poem written in both prose and verse and it generally it is divided into three parts and the second part is the journal of an airman and generally the theme is hero worship I already told you that Auden's poetry derived from popular forms. He showed the classical influences of Horace, Dante, Holderin, Alexander Pope. Classical influences. And he came to be called a left-wing poet at this time in the 1930s because of his involvement with the Spanish Civil War. and at this time orden also wrote verse drama along with his friend christopher isherwood orden wrote verse plays such as the dog beneath the skin or where is francis that is the subtitle the ascent of f6 on the frontier these are his verse plays and at this time there is a collection look stranger letters from iceland is one of his travel books he wrote many travel books one of his travel books is letters from iceland written along with louis mcnees here he shows that the artist should be a kind of journalist another time is a collection of poems it includes the famous poem muse de beau arts we'll talk about it presently in memory of w b yeats another very famous poem also from another time the unknown citizen another famous poem i have already made a video on the unknown citizen in udemy course please watch it another famous poem from another time is September 1 1939 what is the significance of that date that is the date on which the second world war began wow another time has many famous poems muse de beau arts in memory of w b yeats the unknown citizen september 1 1939 in memory of sigmund freud also he has written he has written elegies on w b yeats sigmund freud and henry james now let us take a look at muse de beau arts the poet is looking at paintings in the museum of fine arts in brussels there he sees bruegel's painting the fall of icarus Icarus is falling from the sky. Icarus and Daedalus were imprisoned in an island prison. 
They made wax wings and flew too near the sun, and Icarus falls into the ocean. When this historic event happens, the world is unperturbed. The world does not even notice. Everybody goes about on their daily chores, on their business, without even paying any attention. So the clinical indifferent attitude of the world, that is what is seen here. The focal point of the painting is not the disaster of Icarus falling from the sky, but the indifference of the world to this disaster. In memory of W.B. Yeats is a subversion of the elegy form. The poet mourns more for the troubled times than for the poet W.B. Yeats. Because, remember, this was a very troubled period. W.B. Yeats died in 1939, the year in which the Second World War began. About W.B. Yeats, the poet says, Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. And it contains the lines, The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. The Unknown Citizen is a satirical poem about an unidentified body marked by the number JS07M378. The citizens of Auden's time were reduced to numbers. Very soon we'll be reduced to our Aadhaar number or a password. Do we have an identity? Does the government or the corporations care who we are, what we want? There is a dehumanization of the human beings at this time. Auden satirizes the modern society where the individual become, becomes unimportant. And corporations and social institutions take over. September 1, 1939 was written when the Second World War broke out. The date denotes the day when the German troops invaded Poland. This poem is a personal soliloquy on war and destruction. In memory of Sigmund Freud is an elegy that compares psychoanalysis with the life of the poet. Hey, are you watching the series Freud in Netflix? That's an aside. The middle period of Auden's career from 1940. Auden wrote religious themes at this time, inspired by the Christian existentialist philosopher Soren Kierkegaard. Have you heard of him? Please read up on Soren Kierkegaard. He is a religious existentialist. At this time, Auden wrote three long poems in dramatic form. For the time being, a Christmas oratorio. The Sea and the Mirror, it is a commentary on Shakespeare's Tempest. The Sea and the Mirror. And the third is The Age of Anxiety, a Baroque eclogue. Hey, The Age of Anxiety won the Pulitzer Prize. That was in 1948, I think. And it was written in a modern version of Anglo-Saxon alliterative verse. I told you already W. H. Arden was an experimentalist. He tried out a variety of uh, metrical forms and stanza forms. The Age of Anxiety is written in an eclogue form and it talks about the industrial society and modern man's search for identity. Hey, now we come to Auden's later works. Later works. Later poems of Auden reveal a new note of mysticism in his approach to human problems. Hello! At first, in his early career, he wrote in a modernist style, in a dramatic style, in his middle style, or in his middle period. 
he wrote uh, in a less dramatic manner about the society and its problems. And later poems of Auden turned to a mystical style. The Shield of Achilles is a collection of poems. It also contains the poem, The Shield of Achilles. This collection is a series of six Good Friday poems. And also it contains a sequence of seven poems about man's relation to nature. He calls it bucolics. Bucolics or georgics was a genre that emerged in Greek classical period, if you remember. The poem, The Shield of Achilles, is an ekphrasis. What do you mean by ekphrasis? The description of a work of art in another work of art. John Keats's Ode on a Grecian Urn is an example of ekphrasis. The Shield of Achilles is an ekphrastic description of the shield of Achilles that, the, uh, that Homer describes in Iliad. Homage to Cleo is a later poem. Hey, when you study poets, important poets and novelists and dramatists, study chronologically and you should know which are the poets or the writer's earlier works and which are his later works. Remember, The Shield of Achilles and Homage to Cleo are later works of Auden. Now tell me, friends, who is Cleo? Cleo is the muse of history. Homage to Cleo is a collection of short poems which contains a group of poems about history because Cleo is the muse of history. Auden describes history as a set of unique events made by human choices. History as opposed to nature. Nature is a set of involuntary events created by natural processes. Whereas history is a set of events made by human choices. That dichotomy is there in homage to Cleo. Hey, we have to talk about more poems of W.H. Auden. Oh, where are you going? Are you bored? Come back here. Listen to the video. That is not the meaning. Oh, where are you going? Is Auden's poem in the form of a conversation between a bold man personified as rider and a cautious man personified as reader. A bold man or rider is wanting to go and a cautious man or reader is warning the rider against dangers. Oh, what is that sound that so thrills the ear? It is a poem in the form of a traditional ballad where two voices are heard. In this traditional ballad, two voices are heard, one raising questions out of fear and the other answering reassuringly. The Fall of Rome is another poem. It draws a comparison between the fall of Roman Empire and the decline of modern civilization. Prologue at 60 is one of his later poems as well. It was written after he spent three decades in America. And he feels bored with America. He is disillusioned with America. He is now in retreat from the country. He wants to leave the country. And he's around 60 years old. After writing this poem, he left New York permanently for Oxford and Austria and died shortly afterward. The famous lines from Prologue to 60. Who am I now? An American? No, a New Yorker. This poem illustrates one of his pet themes. What is that? The relationship between identity and place. Next, we have to talk about Stephen Spender. Stephen Spender's Discussion and the discussion of Louis McNeese, Cecil Day-Lewis will be there in the Udemy video.